That's a powerful gospel that we have this evening. It's the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus. And John the Baptist, interestingly enough, identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God. He doesn't say the Messiah. He doesn't say the Christ. He doesn't say the Son of Mary. He says the Lamb of God. And when we hear that word lamb, we probably think of that nice cuddly lamb that we always see the picture of the Good Shepherd holding that little lamb and just in his arms. Well, that's a nice image. But that's not what John is talking about here. When he says the Lamb of God, it's the Lamb of sacrifice. It's the Lamb of the Passover. It's the Lamb who was offered up on the day of Passover and whose blood was poured out as expiation for sin. That is the Lamb of God. And so John, from the very beginning of his gospel, is helping us to realize that the Lamb of God ultimately is going to suffer upon the cross, that that is the message of salvation. But it is that person whom those two disciples want to follow. And they come to Jesus and they said, where do you stay? Now, where do you stay doesn't mean what's your address. It means, who are you? What are you about? What's happening, you know? What's the message? What's the story? And Jesus says, come and learn. Come and listen. And so they go and they stay with him. They enter into the mind and the heart of Jesus. And they become disciples. But immediately, Andrew, one of the true, goes and shares his message with Peter, his brother, and says, we found the Messiah. Come and see. Come and meet him. And Peter goes, and that changes Peter's life as well. The message about this is, first of all, discipleship. In that first reading today, we had about Samuel. And Samuel heard that voice calling him. And he got good advice from Eli. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Listening. So often in our prayer, we don't listen. We may tell God what we want to say to him, but do we listen? Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. When we listen to God, we recognize that he calls us to discipleship of Christ. He calls us to become a follower, but not just a follower, but a missionary disciple, a one who shares the message. Andrew is that beautiful paradigm, that example for each and every one of us of a missionary disciple who not only recognizes Christ, but goes and brings Christ to others, to Peter. That's the call that we have within our life is that share that message of Christ, and not so much by the words of our mouth as by the actions of our daily lives, the attitude with which we live each day of reflecting that truth and love of Christ Jesus. I'm sure we've, many of us have heard the story before, but it probably bears repeating and reflection. And that was about the, some of the U.S military after the Second World War, as they were going through some of the bombed out cities of Germany, they took a little R&R &R and some of them went into this bombed out church that was there. And they found there a statue of Jesus that had been halfway destroyed. And they decided as a sign of hope that they'd try to put it back together again. And so they tried to do that. But there were two pieces that were missing on that statue. And those were the two hands of Jesus. And so they took a piece of board there and some whatever they had, maybe it was just charcoal, but they wrote a little sign out. I have no hands but yours. And that's what they hung where Jesus' hand should be. It's a tremendous message about how we are called to be missionary within our life that Jesus has no voice but ours. Jesus has no hands but ours. He has no ears but ours, but feet to walk except ours. And what a tremendous blessing we have.
to not only be disciples of Christ Jesus, but also to be messengers of Christ Jesus, to be the ones through whom his truth and his love, his compassion and his caring is shared today. Always remember, I have no hands but yours. Here, Lord, are my hands. May they do your work. And here, Lord, are my ears. Speak, for I am listening. 